such sights to show you. He has pulled feet first to the bottom with such force he has never experienced before. And then the pulling stops. He attempts to swim to the surface but gets nowhere fast. If I don't get to the surface, you are going to die. He brings his chest in close to his knees, close to the animal's jaws. He reaches for his foot. His hand slides across a scaly jawline into a tooth-filled mouth. He reels back in surprise, then reaches back down. He fumbles his way toward the top of the animal's head, feeling for an eye socket. He's running out of oxygen. He fights his body's instinct to gasp for air, as he knows that is a death sentence. He lets out the last of the air in his lungs in an exasperated bellow. As his middle finger finds what he searches for, he grasps the massive creature's head with both hands and jams both his thumbs deep into an eye socket. His grasp is broken and his ankle is trashed about. And then it began. A death roll is a defensive maneuver used by crocodiles and alligators to capture and drown their prey. The animal uses its powerful tail to quickly spin in a circle, creating a strong current in the water while holding its prey underwater. The animal will continue to spin until it has dragged the prey underwater and suffocated it. A loud snap is heard an instant before the first roll. Then all went black. The sounds of whooshing and crashing fill his head. His eardrums are popped and his nose and sinuses are blasted full of water and silt. He's raked across a sunken log and comes to a resting face buried in the muck. Then all is calm. The grip on his foot is relaxed and his body floats limply away from the reptile's grasp. He opens his eyes to an infinite blackness. The dirty water seeped into his eye sockets. He is hurt. But he is alive. He looks up through the murky water. A single ray of sunlight illuminates an otherwise infinite expanse of darkness. He looks down and sees tiny bubbles escaping from his mouth. The pain from the struggle is now replaced with wonder. He has never seen anything so beautiful. He spots the silhouette of a kayak on the surface above him. Swim. Swim. He scolds himself for not having reacted more quickly. He listlessly pulls himself up through the water column, every second ticking by with the speed of a slowly emptying hourglass. The surface approaches him, finally. As if reliving a terrible accident, he pushes through the surface gasping and cushing. Black droplets escape his throat as he breathes in life-saving oxygen. <coughs> he reaches for the kayak and grabs hold. But he can't feel it. The cheap plastic hull he comes to know the texture of is absent. He grasps with the other hand. The same thing. No sensation. I think I'm in shock. And there's also something right under my feet trying to eat me. A rush of adrenaline sends his body climbing onto the capsized watercraft. He lays his head on the hull of the kayak. His breathing slows as he feels the peacefulness of the alligator-infested waters. His mind begins to drift and all of the worries of the day slowly evaporate away until all that is left is the tranquility of the swamp. He closes his eyes and allows the cares of the world to fade as he finds his inner peace, submerged in the depths of the Florida swamp lands. He has no sense of time or direction and is exhausted from the effort of escaping the grasp of that monster down below. The sun beats down relentlessly as if determined to bake him alive. Despite his exhaustion, he manages to catch the call of a loon in the distance and gather fragments of strength to carry him forward. He slowly passes tall reeds that seem to be pointing the way home, his hopes slowly coming back to life. He musters the strength to sit up. He looks into the palms of his hands. They are both lacerated, undoubtedly having transpired when the steel wire was ripped from his grasp. Then his glare moves down to his foot. He lifts his pant leg but is immediately halted by pain. The adrenaline and shock have to warn off. Again, he pulls up his pant leg and immediately regrets having done so. His foot is mangled, having been crushed in the jaws of the beast, and is hanging from the bottom of his leg connected by skin and muscles. He retches, but nothing comes up. His stomach is empty. 
Looking down as his severed foot points in a direction he should never have witnessed, he pulls his pant leg back down. Slap. A mosquito lands in his ear and he smacks the side of his head in protest of the insect's bloodlust. Everything in this swamp wants to eat me. It must be cooling down if the bugs are coming out. He tries to estimate the time but cannot think clearly. How long has it been? An hour? Two hours? Four? His mind and memory are a complete haze. Undoubtedly his brain's way of trying to protect him from the trauma he experienced. He speaks out loud to himself. Maybe to help process his thoughts. Maybe because he's gone crazy. The slight current his vessel is on will eventually bring him down to the bay. Eventually. I'm in the middle of Little Madeira Bay. Surrounded by swamplands. My best bet is to stay in the boat. I can't travel on land like this. I'll have to get to a conspicuous spot and hope someone finds me. He rests his head back down. A swarm of mosquitoes and biting flies relentlessly feeding on his flesh and blood. He tries to cover up but it's no use. His t-shirt is too small to keep him covered. So he decided to put it over his head and leave his stomach and back exposed. The lesser of two evils he infers. Frogs croak, crickets chirp and a lone owl calls out in the night. The stars sparkle like diamonds in the inky sky and a light fog drifts in from the marshy waters. As the night grows darker and the wildlife hushes, the darkness deepens and envelopes the bay, creating a tranquil place of refuge. He slips in and out of consciousness as he navigates his own haphazard attempt to sleep. Crash! He's thrown from the boat and back into the water. He nearly falls off the kayak as he jumps out of his slumber. He nervously glances over the side of the boat, expecting to see a set of jaws rolling from the deep to snap him up. A dream. Am I still dreaming? But all he sees is sand. He's run aground in his sleep. He's stuck on a sandbar, along with other bits of debris and rotting sticks and logs. The thick foam accumulating on the debris splashes up onto the boat, covering his foot in a pelagic puree. He winces but does nothing more. There's nothing he can do right now. He attempts to orient himself to stay protected from the waves splashing on him and puts his head back down, 